If you've ever played the game Mario Kart, you probably understand what I'm about to tell you. You could be the best driver on the game, but if you don't know how to find the shortcuts on the course, you're never going to win. In many ways, eBay's the same way. You can make a lot of money buying sports cards on eBay, but there are some shortcuts that make your path to profits so much faster. In today's video, we're gonna count down eight of those. Cue the intro. So in this video, I'm just going to do a screen share and show you exactly what I'm talking about with all eight of these tips. And if you miss something, don't be afraid to pause the video, back it up, and make sure you understand what I'm saying. Watch it through from the beginning, come back, take notes, consume this however makes the most sense for you. I just hope you learn something along the way. There's a lot of profitable tips in here. Tip number one, unless you're buying a card that you need very urgently or a card that's very rare, try to buy an auction. All you have to do is just filter the searches by auction. So why does that matter? We actually did a card line study and concluded that auctions sell for about 14% less than buy now. So you're gonna save some money. Tip number two, if you click on an auction, you get a time when it ends. It tells you exactly, it should be set to your time zone. So this one ends at 9, 11 p.m. If you find cards that end exceptionally early or exceptionally late, you're gonna get a better value on those. We actually did the math and it turns out you save about 30% if you buy something that ends at a weird time. If you find something that ends at 7.13 a.m., you're probably gonna get a pretty good deal on it. Not many people are on eBay buying sports cards. Tip number three, if you're trying to find a card where the name of the athlete's misspelled, the easiest way to do this is just put a minus sign in front of one of the names that you wanna be misspelled. And if you wanna throw in their rookie year, that can help too. For example, I'm going to say 2017 Christian minus McCaffrey. And then we're going to find a lot of McCaffrey rookies where his last name is misspelled. Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, the E and the R switched, etc. If you buy one of these, you're going to get a lot better price than if you just buy one that is listed correctly. Guys, I'm going to interrupt real fast. Before we get to the next tip, one big favor. If you could just do me a favor and hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and then ring the notification bell so you get in on all of our video notifications, that would help us continue to make this great content for you. We also pick a winner every Friday and send them a blaster box of cards, so there might be something in it for you, too. Tip number four, a lot of people search for the athlete's name and then the word rookie. So if you put minus RC and minus rookie and instead include the player's rookie year, you're going to save about 10 to 15%. For example, Patrick Mahomes, 2017 minus RC minus rookie. All of these are going to be Mahomes rookie cards, and yes, some of them are reprints, some of them are bootlegs, but the ones that sell and are legitimate are going to sell for approximately 10% less than they should. Tip number five, eBay makes the most money when they optimize the sell value of the cards, so they try to show people the cards that they think are going to have the best chance of selling for a lot of money. That means when you search something by default, you're on best match and you're getting a lot of cards that are getting a lot of visibility across eBay. That said, if you're on best match, don't start on page one. Start somewhere around page four, maybe even page 10. You're going to see cards that are probably listed not as well, and they might still be just as nice of cards, but they're not going to have as many eyeballs on them, and you're going to have less competition to buy them. Tip number six, if you put anything in quotation marks, it becomes a hard search, meaning eBay searches for exactly what you asked of it. For example, we're going to say quotation mark Justin Hebert. I obviously dropped the R out of Justin Herbert's last name, and then it pulls up these Justin Herbert cards where they are misspelled. All right, this is not a real card, or this is not a Panini card, so um, possibly worth the reporting. Not entirely sure. Either way, here these are nice Herbert cards with his name misspelled, and obviously if you buy one where his name is misspelled and you get it as an auction, you're going to get it at a well of a deal. All right, number seven, and this is related to the same thing. You can do a hard search for a very generic term and then sometimes find some great value. So we're going to say sports card lot. And we want something that is listed as close to this and just this as possible. So just looking through here, there are going to be quite a few that possibly could be worth clicking on and reselling, like this sports miscellaneous sports card lot. It's not selling for much. If any of these cards are valuable, there could be money to be made. This one also looks promising. It is at $50 with $5 shipping, and it looks like there are some nice autographs, a nice patch card, a lot of different color. These pictures are terrible. I've seen actual pictures of Sasquatches clearer than some of these pictures, but there's definitely money to be made, and I'm gonna throw this in my watch list. If you search for these generic terms and then find something like this that is very poorly listed and nobody else has found, you might be able to buy a $50 lot and flip the pieces for $250. 
And finally, tip number eight. When you're trying to make a lot of money on eBay, one of the easiest ways is just buying raw cards and then grading them yourself. The PSA 10 version is typically going to sell for four or five times more than just a raw version. So if you can buy four or five of the raw cards and then make sure that they're in decent condition before submitting them, submit them yourself. And then if one of them gets a PSA 10, you're left with bonus cards, essentially. The catch is that I wouldn't recommend buying raw on any card that is either old and potentially counterfeit or older than probably 10 years and therefore not in great condition but if it's something that's been minted in the last five years or so and should in theory grade a nine or a ten just because it's new then just buy them raw and grade them yourself you're gonna make way more money that way people overlook this a lot so for example i typed in jalen hurts optic hollow i'm just looking through here trying to find a nice card that's raw and reasonably well centered this looks good so i'm going to click on that and then there's only two pictures, so sometimes people post eight, nine, ten pictures of a raw card. This guy only did two, so we're just going to say contact seller, and then you're going to hit contact seller, and then we're just going to type a question. Fast forward to the question. Something like this. Hey man, serious potential buyer, can you send me additional pictures of the card? I'd be buying to grade. Are there any noticeable defects? Thanks for your time. If you let them know you're buying to grade, and if it's somebody who has sold quite a few cards and has positive feedback, Oftentimes they'll say, hey man, it looks like it's good, except there's a small scratch under his left shoulder pad or something to that. I've been told before, hey, I'm not a professional grader, but this card looks perfect to me. And then they came in and sure enough, graded a PSA 10. I've been told, hey, it looks like it could be a PSA 10 and then it ends up a PSA 9. But either way, you make a lot more money. If you just do your diligence, get a few additional pictures, let them know you're buying to grade. And most of the time, these people are trustworthy and honest. And of course, if they say, oh, this is in perfect condition and it comes in with a huge scratch on it, you have digital proof and you can open a case and say this card is not what it was described. I don't think I've ever done that before personally, but at least the options there if you really get hosed. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to watch some more of our videos right here.